Hello everyone and welcome back to my studio. My name is Tom Brown and today I'm going to be showing you how I finished making this miniature deep fryer. Now if you recall from the last video, I made the burner out of a salvaged piece of steel tube. However, while I was bending it into shape, it turned out to not be as pliable as I was expecting, and there were a few kinks, resulting in uh, some back pressure in the burner. Yeah, it's not supposed to do that. So, we're gonna have to scrap this piece, but it's okay, because I have this spare burner from the kitchen. I developed this design uh, over a number of years, and it burns reliably uh, for about 10 minutes at pretty much exactly the temperature needed to deep fry. So the next challenge in the production of this piece is, how do I make the deep fryer basket? My first attempt was to bend it out of this steel mesh that I have in my studio. However, as you can see, it, uh, it just wasn't that malleable. This is another attempt, trying to bend it out of a thin steel wire. I thought this would give it a really nice aesthetic appearance as this is the construction method uh, typically used in a uh, quote-unquote real deep fryer. Uh, however, it was just too complicated and I couldn't get it looking right. So on to the third attempt using this uh, ultra soft scrap aluminum that I have in my studio. So functionally, I believed it was coming together as I was making it, but I was unsure of the way that it looked. Uh, I even went so far as to add a handle to it, but in the end, it just wasn't up to my standard. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to junk this one also. But luckily, I had this piece in my studio. I've been using this as a pot in the miniature kitchen for a while. Uh, however, I held off on adding handles to it because I had a sense that I was probably going to use it as a piece in something else in the future. And I'm glad I did because it's perfect for this application. Now in order for this to be a functional deep fryer basket, it needs to be permeable. I need to let the oil in and then it needs to drain the oil out. And it needs to do both of those relatively quickly. So I needed to make a large number of holes in this, uh, in this object and it turned out that the steel was a lot harder than I was expecting it to be, so this process took uh, quite some time. I faced an additional challenge while drilling out the sides. Uh, as there was no backing, the metal would tend to buckle underneath the weight of the drill bit, so I had to make this piece of wood uh, that fit securely on the inside, so I had some kind of backing to drill against. And uh, even though this part was also very time consuming, I think it came out with a really nice result, and I'm really happy about it. There you go. To the handle. I'll be making it out of this scrap piece of uh, dark walnut. And I'll be making the metal segments of the handle out of that same piece of mild steel.
Okay, so now that the holes are drilled, I can really start to get a sense of how this piece is going to fit together. And I will be attaching it to the main body, again using rivets. And in this shot here, you can get a much better look at the actual process. You can really watch the aluminum expand on the end and get a sense for how many hammer blows it takes. Uh, how going really slow, doing it a little bit at a time, ends up with a superior end result. Nice and secure. So now I'm bending the handle back just by feel. So the way the fryer functions, the basket hovers just above the bottom of the fryer. It doesn't touch the bottom of the fryer. So this needs to have a handle on both sides to suspend it above the bottom. And you can see me just giving the finishing blows to these rivets. Nice and secure. And it, uh, it fits in and comes out with zero resistance, which is what I was looking for. So now the way I'm cutting this piece of wood, some of you might be cringing. I definitely don't recommend doing it like this at home, but uh, sometimes, sometimes you gotta take a few risks. Fits perfectly. So the final connection is gonna be made by sticking a piece of that aluminum through the hole that is both in the wood and the metal and super gluing it in place. Now this is super glue here. This is my secret weapon in the studio. It's so versatile. I love the fast cure time. If you're a miniature maker, I really recommend using super glue. And if you find that uh, a piece isn't curing fast enough, use a heat gun or a hair dryer and just uh, gently heat it and it'll basically trigger an instant reaction where the glue hardens and you can move on to your next step. So the wood is important in this piece because the metal is going to be getting quite hot. If I were to be picking the piece up by the bare metal, I would likely be getting uh, uh, some very small burns on my fingers every time I used it. It's really starting to come together. At this point in a project, um, as we get to my favorite step, oiling the wood. I really start to, uh, I really start to have a pretty big smile on my face. And there we have it, all oiled up and ready to fry. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. If you enjoyed it, please let me know below in the comments. And uh, consider subscribing to my channel, telling your friends about it, but most of all, just thank you for being here. Bye.